Arc segments are more complex than you might think at first. The idea of trying to describe an arc concisely proves to be a challenge. The geometry sink provides the current position, so the arc segment just needs to provide the endpoint. But how the arc travels to the endpoint can be quite ambiguous. Obviously, you'll want to specify the x and y radius of the arc. But if you think about it in terms of a radius, you can imagine that there has to be an ellipse that travels through both the start and end points of this arc. And then it becomes clear that there are two possible positions for the ellipse to cross these points. It's at this point that you realize also that there are then at most four possible arcs to choose from. Disambiguating this is in large part the job of the arc segment structure. First up is the endpoint for the segment through which the imaginary ellipse must obviously cross. Then there's the x and y radius that, the, that defines the ellipse. The rotation angle is only interesting if the x and y values are not equal. In that case, you really need to figure out how the imaginary ellipse is rotated before you can lock down any possible arcs. Next is the sweep direction. Logically, does the arc travel in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction? Assuming the current position in this example is the top left and the lower right is the segment's endpoint, the possible clockwise arcs are the ones toward the right and the possible counterclockwise arcs are the two towards the left. Finally, you need to pick between the large and the small arcs. It's only at this point that you can definitively describe an arc. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to construct some arc segments. To illustrate some of the different options, I'll use four different path geometries. If I only used one path geometry with four figures, the brush would paint them all as if the geometry consisted of two overlapping ellipses. To make this a little more interesting, I'll use the mouse to adjust the arc anchor points. Okay, first we need to build the path geometries. I'll create a helper function to avoid writing the same code four times. Given a path geometry compointer, build path will create a new path geometry using the current anchor points and the given sweep direction and anchor size. The first step is to fill the default arc segment structure. The endpoint. The x and y radius. The rotation, direction, and large or small. I'm using a fixed radius to keep things simple. That way I don't have to worry about the rotation. And now I can create the path geometry. Given that I plan to animate this, I'm careful to use the release and get address of method to release any existing geometry object. Now I need to open the geometry's sync. I'll just add a single figure consisting of this arc. And finally, I'll close the sink so that the geometry is ready to be drawn. I can now go ahead and use this build path helper function to build the four possible arcs.
I want the application to have some sensible starting points, so I'll go ahead and provide those. Okay, it's time to draw the window. First, I'll add the two anchor points, just to highlight the, the one from the other. The first will be yellow. And I'll use an ellipse. Second one can be green, and that's the end point. Next I'll draw the four arcs, using different colors to clearly show that these are not in fact ellipses being drawn. First pair can be black. So we'll use black for the first two, and then we can use, let's say, blue for the next two. There we go. Let's have a look. So far, so good. Now let's have a little fun with the mouse. I'll begin by adding two helpers to rebuild the arcs based on the mouse position. Rebuild the paths and then invalidate. And we'll do the same for the end one. Build paths. This is the end we're updating. There we go. I want the left mouse button to move the begin point and then the right mouse button to move the end point. To do that, I need to capture the mouse, so even if the user moves the mouse outside of the window, I will still receive the mouse positions. Left mouse button down. Capture the mouse. Move the begin position. Right mouse button down. Capture the mouse again and move the end position. Of course, I need to remember to release the mouse. Finally, I'll go and update the geometries when the mouse is actually moved. If it's the, mess, if it's the left mouse button, then I'll move the begin point. Otherwise, it's the right button. There we go. Let's take a look. Now let's see if it works. 
see with the left mouse button I can move the first anchor point, the start point, and with the right mouse button I can move the the end point. Now notice how when the anchor points exceed the given radius that it automatically adjusts so that it can still draw the segment.